Seventh Meeting, Sunday, June 16th, 1974. Adan Mahabua gave the following talk. Today I will give some explanation of Tamma before answering questions. I will not talk for long, as I am afraid the translator will not be able to remember. The word sasana, religion, if its meaning is shown by analogy with things in this world, is like clean, pure water. The jitta is like an object which is in continual use. It will probably come into frequent contact with dirty things, and so it should be continually cleaned and washed. Otherwise, one should not go on using it any more. The jitta works the whole time, always thinking, speaking, and acting. Because of that, the jitta is important to people who tend to think and imagine all the time, without considering whether what they think is good or bad, or whether it is dangerous to them or to others who are in any way associated with them. Buddhism is like water that washes and cleanses the jitta, always keeping it clean. If the jitta is likened to clothes, one can say that they are fit to be worn, or if it's likened to household utensils, they are suitable for use and are not unpleasant. But if these things are not washed constantly, they become unfit for use. The jitta which is not good is the same. The jitta that's regularly washed and trained is likely to be clear, clean, calm, cool, and developed in ways appropriate to tamma. Nothing in the world can accept tamma as well as the jitta, which is the vessel for receiving tamma. The Lord Buddha practiced until his heart was pure, so the tamma cleansed the heart of the Lord until it was clean and free from blemish, taint, or intoxication with the world. The Buddha taught all equally, regardless of status or caste, so Buddhism is not a danger to anyone. Like clean water, people of every status and caste can use it, and nobody dislikes it. Buddhism comes from the Lord who is genuinely pure. The Lord Buddha was thus the first hand to be clean. The hands of the Savakas of the Lord Buddha were also clean, so the first hand and the second hand were both clean. Since the Savaka Sangha had all attained the purity of Arahantship, the Tamma which was propagated and taught in those days was clean and gave results to those who listened with full attention. From there it began to get more and more tainted, and the taints were connected with those who were associated with religion. Religion thus became a basis for antagonism, so that religions that people didn't like were seen to be enemies of their own religion. Thus there arose a liking for this religion and a loathing for that one, which was not the intention of the religion or of its founder. The founders of every true religion did not want people to spoil its harmony or to break it up by opposing the religious teaching. They taught that people should blend well together and not split up and break the harmony, for this is a hindrance for the religion. But since the heart has the mundane world hidden within it, this inner world has the power to make people act according to its mundane nature. Religion can therefore be a danger to those who dislike it, and a boon to those who like it. Amongst those who believe in different religions, there arose conflict and disagreement, and they looked down on, reviled, and despised each other's religion. Religion thus became a tool for the two sides to quarrel over, with dirty hearts driving them on. But the religions themselves remain good, because they teach people to be good in accordance with their knowledge, ability, and good intentions. When we learned various branches of knowledge at school, not all knowledge came from one teacher, for one taught us this, and another taught us that, and it is just about impossible that they should all have taught exactly the same things. The Lord Buddha taught Tamma so that people would attain the level of Arahant. An Arahant is one who has reached the level of Isuddhigurna, the quality of purity, he is a pure person with a pure jitta. Whatever basic level of development a person has, he can teach about that level, depending also on his inherent ability to teach. The person who learns can also receive the teaching to an extent depending on his inherent ability to learn. Therefore, the extent to which we will be able to follow and practice the way of the religion will also depend on our own ability, because to go further than the ability of the teacher and the people who practices is almost impossible. 
All of us have hope in our hearts, for we are not people who have given up hope, but it may not yet show itself so that we may know it in ourselves. Some hopes have already been fulfilled, some have not, and some have only been partly fulfilled. The principles of Thamma in Buddhism bring fulfillment of people's hopes in a way that is complete and satisfactory. There is no need to talk about people who have given up hope, because they have not decided to become good people and so are likely to remain hopeless. So we should act and behave in such a way that will always give us hope. Hope makes us good people who practice generosity, morality, and meditation. And based on this, whether today, tomorrow, this life, or in future lives, we will not become people who have no refuge and no support, since we have the Thamma which continues to be with us. Normally the heart contains good, evil, and neutral things, so it can develop or deteriorate accordingly. The wisest people therefore try to train the mind so that they become good people. When it gets difficult, they will try to be victorious over all bad things by taking hold of Thamma as their refuge, as the basic principle of their hearts. They will then gain the hopes of their hearts in full measure in the future. The hearts of people cannot disappear. They can deteriorate or they can develop and be made pure. When the jitta has become pure, happiness which is not of a type found in this world will be found by the one who practices. He will then realize within himself what kind of happiness it is. Any of you who have questions may ask them now. If you bring up the essential points of Thamma from the subject of today's talk, I will be very glad to explain them in accordance with mindfulness and wisdom in a practical way. Questions and Answers First question, Woman 1. Is it true that the jitta is the awareness of right and wrong, conscience, and that this jitta dwells in the heart? Answer. Yes, it is that normal awareness which is always present, the awareness of right and wrong of a person or other being accordingly. The Lord said that the jitta dwells in the hadayawattu, heart base, which is the center of the body. But one should understand that the jitta is nama tamma, so it just knows. It is not a physical object, even though it dwells in the hadayawattu, so it is not like an egg or a fruit dwelling in a shell. Therefore, all one can say is that it just dwells there, although the meaning of this is difficult for one to imagine or to guess. Second question, man two. When sitting in samadhi and it gets painful, how should we overcome this? Answer. There are several ways to remedy this. 1. Thinking that it is better to sleep, you turn and escape to your pillow as your refuge. 2. When it becomes painful due to sitting, then get up and walk jankama. Thus, by changing posture, the pain goes away. 3. As soon as it becomes painful, concentrate on the pain and ask yourself, where is the pain? Look at the parts of the body, the condition of the jitta, and the state of the feeling until you see them all equally as they truly are. Then the painful feeling will either cease entirely or you will see truly that even though those parts of your body are dukkha, the jitta is not dukkha. Because of that, the dukkha is not able to overpower the jitta. Because the jitta is unshakably established, the conditions will go as far as they can and then give way of themselves. When you are confident in yourself that the method of fighting against dukkha by investigating is the best and highest way, you should analyze dukkha into external and internal. But practicing and striving in this way is truly very painful. As though your bones are breaking apart, or as though you are on fire all over, you want to know the extent of your ability, but you must fight before you know how far your jitta is able to go. You still do not know for sure what dukkha vedana, painful feeling, really is, whether it is dukkha, the cause of dukkha, samudaya, the cessation of dukkha, nirotha, or the path leading to the cessation of dukkha, magga. So mindfulness and wisdom must be used to search and think it out. If you can search it out to completion, it can quench dukkha, like burning gunpowder which flares up and in a moment it all goes out, but the jitta remains. So take up dukkha vedana and examine what kind of dukkha arises at the moment the body breaks up and ceases to exist. 
In truth, Dukkha arises and ceases continuously, but the jitta itself never dies. In fact, the jitta becomes more and more clear and then drops into a state of calm beyond your expectations. But those who are afraid of dying will have to experience death over and over again. Therefore, one should take up this meditation on Dukkha Vedana and put it into practice. But be advised, it is much more difficult to do than the ordinary meditation methods, where one sleeps at times and wakes up at times, which do not give the good results that one ought to get. Third question, Man 2. Can we use this method to cure other problems, such as distraction or restless thoughts? Answer. The dukkha that arises from pain is dukkha of the physical body. Distraction is dukkha also, but it is dukkha which arises from the heart, because the origin of dukkha is the cause of it. It can be quieted by the method mentioned above, and those who practice have done this until they have obtained results which are satisfactory. Those who want the highest results should not feel repelled by this method, which can fight the tricks and deceits of the Kilesas better than any other method. Fourth question, Man 2. Tanha, craving, is the origin of Dukkha, is it not? Answer. In what way is there Dukkha together with Tanha, craving, and in what way is there Dukkha without Tanha? You must examine further. In other words, just wanting dukkha to go away is tanha, but if you want to know the reasons for it, such as, what is dukkha? What is its cause? How can I get rid of dukkha? That is the path. Desire in the direction of getting free from dukkha by turning towards the search for the way of peace and happiness is not tanha, but mugga. Fifth question, Man 3. Mindfulness and Samadhi are two steps of the Eightfold Path, and it seems that they are the seventh and eighth stages. How are Mindfulness and Samadhi in the Eightfold Path different from their use elsewhere? Answer. Mindfulness is the faculty that controls the jitta. Samadhi depends on mindfulness to supervise the jitta until the jitta can be set up in one place and remain there, so that a state of calm arises many times. In other words, at first it arises as karnika samadhi, a moment of calm, and then it withdraws. Later on the calm becomes a bit deeper, which is ubadzara samadhi. We must depend on mindfulness to retain control until wisdom comes in to investigate. When wisdom is coupled with mindfulness, we will always be able to contemplate all sorts of things. Eventually mindfulness becomes super-mindfulness, and wisdom becomes super-wisdom. With mindfulness in control, the jitta which has faults in it will depend on mindfulness to protect it and correct its faults. If the jitta becomes calm and free from the gelesis that disturb it, there is no need to cure them at that moment. The jitta will then be absolutely calm, which is appana samadhi, full absorption. This is the way we talk about practice. The training is difficult in the beginning. To start with, you have never done it before, so you have never seen what results come from doing it. You must depend on mindfulness to force you to do the training, going against your inclinations by using reason to show the need for it. But once the results begin to appear in your jitta, interest in the training and the will and the effort to do it will steadily follow. Then, the more that strange and unusual results begin to appear in the jitta, the more the effort comes of itself. Those factors of tamma which are the means of attaining successful results, being the four ittibada, roads to success, including chanda, satisfaction, virya, effort or striving, jitta, pleasurable absorption or interest, and vimangsa, careful consideration or thought, will steadily become stronger, until they enable one who practices to attain his intended goal without any obstacle being able to stop him. Sixth question, woman one. When we are able to do samadhi, will the time come when we no longer need to sit in meditation? Answer. Before you are able to read, you must persevere in learning to spell out words and practice writing. When you are going to write the word you, you must spell it out Y-O-U. Then the time comes when you are able to write, so that when you think of the word you, you can write it without having to spell it out. But does someone who can read and write then stop reading and writing? Training in samadhi is the same as the above. 
To begin with, mindfulness must be used constantly to supervise and force the chitta to do it. As he goes on doing it, the one who practices will be successful and get various results for himself, and he will gain skill and ability. When he practices samadhi, striving to get rid of the gilesas until he eventually becomes free from them all, he still goes on doing samadhi, but he no longer strives for freedom from the gilesas because they are already gone. When he lies down to rest and sleep, he stops. But when he gets up, he uses mindfulness and wisdom in all sorts of activities, including the practice of samadhi meditation that he continues to do. He does not throw away the work that he has done in the same way as someone who is able to read and write does not stop reading. He goes on doing this so that it shall be of increasing value in various ways. He does not stop just because he is able to read and write. The practice of samadhi meditation by those who have got rid of the kilesas is like this. They must go on doing it for the purpose of vihara tamma, living comfortably in this world with the tatu and kantas, mind and body, live. Seventh question, woman one. When our hearts are not calm, please give some advice on how to cure this state. Answer. Generally, for those who practice, it is like I have already explained. You must use effort a great deal until you become calm. You must also use mindfulness and wisdom to overcome those things which are obstacles in whatever way is appropriate to the practice. Eventually, the one who practices will know for himself that he is in a position to get free from all obstacles so that he need not be born again. In this respect, the tamma is unbiased and immediately shows results to those who practice truly and steadily. In the Dibirtika, it states that the Lord Buddha and Asavakas claimed they had to force themselves to put forward effort very often before they gained enlightenment. From then up to the time when they each entered Parinibbana, the Buddha and Asavakas still entered Samadhi and Nirodha Samapati, which is a way for the Jitta to dwell comfortably at ease amongst the Kantas, Vihara Tamma, until the time when the Jitta departed from the body, which could not last any longer, and entered Nibbana the ultimate happiness free from trouble of any kind at all. When the Lord Buddha was about to enter Parinibbana, he entered Samadhi. He entered the first chana and went up stage by stage to the state of Sunya Vedayata Nirodha Smabhati, and then returned step by step back to the first chana. Then he began at the first chana and went up to the fourth chana and attained Parinibbana between the Rupatanas and the Arupatanas. Because the Lord Buddha was able to do and experience the highest levels like this, all the Savakas persevered in following his example until they succeeded in becoming Arahants following the Lord Buddha. The Lord Buddha sought and found Tamma until he became enlightened. Then he continually taught the Tamma to his followers until the day he entered Parinibbana. All of us, therefore, should faithfully take to heart that Buddhang Saranangatami, the Buddha is our refuge. Tammang Saranangatami, the Tamma is our refuge. Sankang Saranangatami, the Sankha is our refuge. In our status as Buddhists, we do not wholeheartedly take anyone else as our refuge in the same way we do the Buddha, the Tamma, and the Sankha, which are most excellent and supreme. Eighth question, Woman 1. Is it true that the practice of Vipassana, insight, does not attain Tana? Answer. The Lord Buddha entered Tana Samapati, Tana attainment. The Savakas strove to clean out the Gilesas until they attained purity and became Arahants of four different kinds. The purity which they attained was essentially the same for all four types. As for the specific characteristics of their Chitta, each had special qualities in accordance with his tendencies of character like those who were praised for the quality in which they were the most skilled and capable. When the Kantas and Jitta had still not separated, they entered Samadhi Samabhati in whatever way suited their characters and skills, until they reached the end of their time. Tana is the realm which gives the heart a rest, whereas Vipassana is the examination, the contemplation of natural phenomena, Sapawatamma, so as to know the truth of them clearly, so as to let go of your attachment to them one after another until you reach the end of the things that you should let go of. Then you reach purity and freedom. As to the question whether vipassana will lead to tana or not, this is the concern of stupid people who speculate in their habitual ways of thought, but do not begin to do anything in connection with them. 
Ninth question, woman one. I do not understand what the characteristics of entering Tana are. Answer, don't be anxious about Tana. Tana is just a byproduct of doing the practice, and you should not let it become an obsession. The aim of training yourself in order to cut away the kilesas so that they are got rid of from the heart is the thing which you should be most interested in. Tenth question, man four. What is the meaning of jitta? Answer. The jitta is vinyarna in the five kandhas. This is the knowing that arises when external things contact and stimulate the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, or heart. When stimulation takes place, the jitta knows it and then it ceases, which is the story of arising or birth and ceasing or dying. Ultimately, the jitta is your basic fundamental knowing. The jitta is constantly creating the conditions for becoming in birth, so it's always being reborn, dependent upon those things which are infused into the jitta. Eleventh question, man four. Are the jitta and wisdom the same thing? Answer, the jitta and wisdom are different, but they are related to each other. There is a way, however, in which they can be one, and those who practice should be able to know this in a natural way for themselves while they are practicing. Going by general principles, mindfulness and wisdom are mental factors that can arise and cease in the same way as all phenomena. Therefore, to say that they are one and the same as the heart is not proper. On the other hand, they are factors of the path, magga, who are tools for curing the kilesas so as to attain purity of heart. Twelfth question, woman two. May we ask if we could sit in samadhi together with you for a long time? Answer. For those who have already done a lot of practice, sitting in samadhi for a long time is not a problem. But you cannot expect those who have just begun to learn to sit for a long time. For that reason, people must decide on the amount of time for sitting that is appropriate to their ability. As for sitting together in a group, this will probably depend on circumstances. But the important thing is you should sit according to your own temperament. Whether this will be for a long time or not should be up to you. Thirteenth question, man five. How does anatta differ from going to be born again? Answer. Atta and anatta are tammas that are paired off together until the ultimate limit of the mundane relative world, sammudi, until the jitta is free from the gilesas and has become a special jitta. Atta and anatta then disappear of themselves, and there is no need to drive either of them out, for there is just the entirely pure jitta, which is eka jitta eka tamma, no further duality with anything. The word anatta is a factor of the dilakkana. Those who aim for purity, freedom, and nibbana should contemplate anitza, dukkha, and anatta until they see and understand all three dilakkana clearly. Then it may be said that the jitta has gone well free. Nibbana, however, is not anatta. How can you force it to be anatta, which is one of the dilakkana, and therefore part of the path for getting to nibbana?